looks like we are now officially live on Facebook. So uh, let's give everybody like two to three minutes. Uh, you know, not everybody is uh, punctual. And I is expect that people that want to hear about someone that's crushing it on the phones is probably very sales focused, aka they're busy and we they have a lot of going on. And so let's give them just a second. Um, Kent, what, what area are you in again? Uh, salt, just south of Salt Lake. Oh, nice. Okay. So I work Salt Lake County and Utah County. Okay. Yeah. Two, two of the bigger ones here in Utah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, has your, uh, as far as inventory goes, I mean, this will be good context for our conversation. Are you a pretty limited on inventory still in your area? Yeah, we are like quite a bit. I mean, we bumped up from 242 homes here in Utah County. Mm-hmm. to I think we're at 682 when I checked or 681 today when I checked is that so low it's yeah, yeah it's going up but it's on the low end we're usually hanging around 1200 to 2000 oh wow okay so still like 50 percent of what's normal yeah nice okay and so uh for those that don't know um you know Ken you've been in the, the industry for about what three, four years, roughly, give or take. Is that so right? In the industry, yeah, four years. Okay. Four years. Yeah. And you are primarily, uh, you know, you're dialing for dollars as this session is really talking about. And, um, and, and I guess we'll go ahead and get started because now I'm just super curious. How, why and how did you decide to dial to build your business? What was the, was it something you fell upon or was it, is so it your so background? You want, like, you want like the whole story or do you want the condensed version of it? I don't know. It depends on how interesting it is. I mean, it's kind of interesting. So right, I'll, go for it. I'll, I'll give you the story. Right. So FedEx is on this, in Utah, is on this little road, just outside of this little road. And right across from Red X is where I lived in these little condo buildings. And I was making nine seventy five an hour as a nursing assistant, as a CNA. Wow. And my wife was making $15 an hour. We just got married. My wife had a kid. She's like, hey, I want to be a stay-at-home mom. I was like, okay, well, $9.75 doesn't actually pay the bills. So driving by, I drove by Red X one day. And I was like, oh, that building looks kind of cool. wonder what Red X is. So I went in the next day, asked to speak with the sales manager, and got a job at Red X. Interesting. So... Didn't really have a lot of experience, got that job and was one of their top performing salespeople for three, four years and just decided, man, I can do this. Mm-hmm. If I can spend eight hours on the phone calling for edX, I can spend two, three hours a day calling for myself. The best ISA is always become agents and not that you were an ISA, but you get what I'm saying. I mean, yeah. in, a, in a sense I was though. I mean, I was an ISA. Yeah. For Red X, basically. For Red X, yeah. For- interesting, interesting. Yeah. So before we talk about, so I think that the fact that you worked for this company, like I think there's probably some things or themes that you saw that people were doing that they shouldn't be doing. Um, and if you, you know, just generally speaking, you know, I, I know you probably were selling the product, but uh, if you ever heard about a customer deciding that they didn't want the product, um, you know, what, what are some themes that you saw in your tenure of people, not the people that were successful. Okay. So I'm specifically asking about the people that weren't crushing it, um, on this or any expired program. So outside of Red X, were there any themes you would see sometimes as to why they were failing? Yeah. I would say the biggest thing and all real estate agents are this way. They're looking for that, like magic bullet. Mm-hmm. I mean, truth. Every single yeah. one of them are. And so they flow with the wind. Mm-hmm. Like they'll look at it and be like, oh, prospecting super easy, or this is super easy. This person's being successful doing this. Mm-hmm. And so they'll jump on that bandwagon for a minute and, be like, and they won't stick to it consistently. And that's, a, that's all it is. So I, I, if you think about real estate, real estate's like riding a bike. You get on the bike, you pedal. And when you're first starting to pedal, it's kind of hard. Right. The thing is, is most people don't get that momentum to continue to carry them. Right. 
So, so they get on and off the bike so often that it's just hard for them rather than being consistent and being in momentum. Well, that's interesting. Um, and I think for those that are listening right now, that's not consistency is normally not a, like a super exciting topic, but so I run a team in Virginia and we do uh, between 800 and 900 transactions a year. And I, um, I tell them all the time, success is not made up of one event. It's lots of little things that people don't see. So uh, still going precursor. Uh, and I know I'm putting you on the spot, so I apologize, but would you say, cause you being motivated by being a good husband and a good father took a chance by walking into this company, Red X. And of course that went into one career and then another. Would you say that you're still motivated by that drive to provide for your family? Is that still kind of what's fueling it or, and it's okay if it isn't, I'm just curious, is it now become like fishing for me, lead gen is like fishing. Like it's like, I get that rush and that excitement. So just out of curiosity, what do you, you wake up in the morning, you don't feel like doing it. How do you, how do you have that drive to keep staying consistent? Accountability. I, I mean, that's, okay. that's really what it is. I, I look at Red X and how they were built. They had a call center. So you were in the room with all these guys prospecting. Okay. Like calling agents. Now they were a little warmer leads than what you're getting from Red X, actually. Yeah. I wouldn't say that I'm, I am motivated by providing for my family. Absolutely. But okay. that'll carry you so far. Yeah. Um, I would say I'm more motivated to be the best that I can be. By the time I'm, I'm finished, I want this to be easy for me. Yeah. Actually, and see yeah, how no. that I can truthfully get. So accountability is a huge part of that. Yeah. I'm sure you know, you run a team. Are they expected to be somewhere at a certain time and hit certain goals yeah. and yeah. yeah, KPIs to stay on your team? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so that's, why, that's why you pump out eight, 900 deals a year because there's that level of accountability. Well, I think I would also say though, who are you holding yourself? Are you holding yourself accountable? Or are you, who, who are you accountable to? So I have, I have two levels of accountability. I have two accountability partners that I pay, I pay a lot of money to if I don't perform. So that drives me big time. Okay, so pause for a second. Yeah. If you're listening and you're not driving, <laughs> write that down. So he, he has put money on the line to be accountable to somebody else so that when his, see motivation, motivation comes and goes. You have to figure out a way to gamify and drive yourself. And so the first thing he's doing that I want to point out is that he's, he's, he's invested in being accountable. Um, there's actually a really cool, I don't know the name of it, but I see people post about it all the time, an app where a group of people decide to work out and they don't have to be together, but it's like, all right, I'm going to join this group. And if you don't post a picture of yourself working out the app, you, you have to pay into this group and then everybody gets your money. Um, and so you're not doing the same thing, but very similar in that regard. Okay. Sorry. I know I'm interrupting, but this is oh, interesting. No, that's per like, honestly, that's what it is. So yeah. I have money on the line and I take it a step further there, whether you have political affiliations, you don't agree with or whatever it may be a cause that you just don't want to get behind Yeah. and say, if I don't do what I'm supposed to do, a certain portion of that money goes towards that cause. Ah, so that's interesting. So now I'm not better of a person you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, this is interesting. This is interesting. So, okay, so you're accountable, and that's helping you drive. Accountable, yeah. And then just doing the things that I'm supposed to do every day. One of those things is that I so role play every day. That's a big part of my morning. Okay. It's so hard to find consistent role play partners. I don't know if you found that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but they just don't show up. So right. now it's, if you're late, for each minute you're late, it's $10. If you miss completely, it's $100. Wow. You're unusual. And this is in a good way. I'm not saying it in a bad way. Like you're, you're, this is really, and I see now why Red X is having you speak because um, but it goes you're not. Ends. It makes me do it just as much as it makes them do it. Yeah, absolutely. But role playing, you're honing your craft, right? Yeah. You're objection handling, you're you know, working on your pitch, 
Um, that's interesting. So you don't just pick up the phone and hope for the best, huh? <laughs> you know, I don't. That's, that, was, that was another thing, if we can go back to the first point that you've asked me, or yeah. the first question you asked me, what did I see a lot of agents failing with? It's that they found a script, they used it a couple of times, it didn't work, so they went on to the next script, and the next one, and the next one. They right. truly never just found a script and internalized it. I watched a guy on YouTube, he makes a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, I'm guessing, prospecting. Uh -huh. His script is literally, hi, this is such and such agent, do you need to sell your home? No. Okay, thank you, bye. Hi. The, <laughs> it, and I, I was like, man, that is the worst script ever, but he is consistent with it. He's doing right. it every day. Right, right. That's good. <laughs> and uh, what? And with a dialer, like what Reddit, the dialer that Red X provides, you know, it does make it a lot easier because you can just kind of line them up and just, and oh, go. For sure. You can throw them in and just sit there and triple line dial. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's triple cool. line. That's very powerful. Um, all right, so let's give some folks that are listening some actionable stuff. Like, um, so you and I are at a coffee shop. I'm a new agent, and I'm like, all right, I just bought Red X, um, uh, and I, I want to do good. I'm going to be consistent. Uh, I'm going to do my role play. When I'm calling, should I start with expired, FISBOs, circle prospecting, which circle prospecting, guys, just so you know, is like you just get a chunk of a neighborhood. And you just kind of call through and try to surface business. Yeah. It depends on how thick your skin is. So expireds and FISBOs are obviously going to be lower hanging fruit. They mm -hmm. need to sell. If you're good at follow-up, I would call, call those people. Now they okay. are going to be a little bit harsher just yeah. because we're getting a lot of agents calling them. <laughs> if, you, if you have thin skin, then start off with geo leads. Okay. Or if you're scared to prospect. Right. Geo leads you can usually have great conversations with. Right. And call just listed, just sold. Call them with some neighborhood news, Barry. We just listed your neighbor's home for sale. Call them to see who you know. No one? Great. When do you plan on moving? How can I help you? So when they say they don't know anybody, you ask, you, your follow-up is, when do you plan on moving? Yeah, when do you plan on moving, Barry? You know, we're not really planning on any time in the near future. Totally get it. If an acceptable offer came your way, would it? Would you? Would you move? Would you look at it? Wow! So you go for that second no. Uh, that's that's powerful stuff. So it, we need to dissect that for a second because if people are listening casually, they probably didn't pick up on what just happened. Um, so he's he's he just gave us what he's doing when he's calling a neighborhood. I've just listed a home. Do you know anybody? No. Are you looking to move? And I'm I'm paraphrasing, okay? But and and you know, and in, in this scenario, I said no. And I would I would argue that a lot of agents would just say, okay, bye at that point. Which but is he, fine. Yeah. Which is totally fine. You're doing it. Right. You right. can only take it a step further. Right. Well, you're taking it two steps. Like yeah. you're you're and and then you're saying if if you if an offer, because and I'm sure you've had people that said yes to that. Right. I mean, time, yeah. yeah, right. Um, and so, all right. So um, consistency, I'm trying to melt it down because I know most are doing multiple things. Consistency. Um, and uh, if, if you have thin skin, you're going to do circle prospecting because you'll have great conversations and push for those two no's. Um, you know, first ask, you know, anybody, are you willing? And then second is, are you willing to move? All right. So now let's talk about I tell you, all right, no, I got thick skin. I'm not worried about these strangers. I'm not worried about it. So now uh, you'd say, would I call FISBOs or expires first or either or? Well, I both. Yeah, I would. I'd call both of them. Okay. All right. And what, what would you say is your favorite um, FISBO? Like, uh, you know, if I was, if you were to summarize a conversation for FISBO, what's one of your favorites? I mean, FISBOs for the most part will, oh, I'm not looking for an agent right now. I want to save on the commission. I'm already, I already have a lot of interest. I already have buyers coming through. So there's a lot of closes that you can go through with them. Mm -hmm. Pick one. Let's, let's pick a scenario. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I don't think I need an agent. Okay. I, I totally understand that. 
So tell me, is it because you hate agents or you just have sold a lot of homes on your own? I mean, neither really. I just, the market's just insane. I feel like if I can stick a sign in the yard, I'll get a buyer and save 6%. Totally. And, and I get that. You can stick a sign in your yard. A monkey could sell a home right now, right? <laughs> That's true. See? <laughs> So Barry, let me ask you this. If I come by for 15 minutes, and I know you can sell it on your own, but if we can net net bottom line, put more money in your pocket, which I'm assuming is what you want, or are you more concerned by just selling it by yourself? No, it's I, I want to increase my net for sure. Yeah. Wouldn't it be worth 15 minutes of your time for us to sit down and be, make sure that you're pricing the home right and not leaving any money on the table? And truthfully, Barry, if you don't like me or anything I have to say, you don't have to hire me, do you? Right. Yeah, you're in All charge. Right. Exactly. Let's get together this afternoon. Are you available at four or five? Right. So, so then let's talk about that for a second. You know, he he surfaced what was motivating me, which was money. Um, and you guys also notice he's using the word totally. I get that. And every single time I give an objection everything and i'm not sure if you always use that totally i get that but you base hold on a second my crm <laughs> okay sorry um he's affirming their objection and i think uh a lot of us are we're listening to respond not listening to understand and so wh whether he's listening to understand or not he's making them feel understood by affirming it. I totally get that, you know, and, um, and I think that that's for, I know for my agents, we, I want them no matter what the objection is, I want them, you know, how agents it's like bad news, kind of like, yeah. Oh, it's okay that you want to sell it on. It's bad news, but I'm being nice. But you know, what you're doing is you're, you're saying like, I understand that I'm with you. I feel the same way, you know, and it, it, it gives you, in my opinion, more of a voice with people than, uh, than just trying to get past it and overcome some objection. Um, so let's see. So, okay. So calling the expires and FISBOs are the same. Now, when you get to the house, um, you know, they're, they're like, all right, well, how are you going to get me more money? Now they're not going to say that. I know that like normally not going to, I mean, you, that's probably a good thing if they do, but. Um, they come up on the phone if they're going to ask you that. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Nine, nine right. times out of 10, it does. Okay, well, you, how are you going to make me more money? Right. What do you say? That's a great question. I have a 20-point proactive marketing plan that's going to net you more money in your pocket. And I'll send that out to you before I come out this afternoon. Fair enough? Oh, so you're sending yeah. it before. I send over a pre-listing packet before I go over. And do you use, uh, is there a software you use or is it a PDF or... So if it's same day PDF, if it's the day after or a couple of days ahead, then I will send it out in the mail. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's powerful. And that helps a ton because then you're giving them the price. So I put my net sheet in there that has my commission, the CMA, and then that 18 point marketing plan. And I ask them to read through that because it digs out all their objections before I come out. Wow. Okay. And um, do you, the commission, are you still doing 6% listings? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So this is, the, you know, what's really interesting to me in hearing you talk about this is um, you're not, you're not, there's no smoke and mirrors here. You're just really just, you're about your craft, you're doing your job and, and you're talking to people. What would be a good number per day? Do you go by hours or do you go by number of calls or number of conversations to decide? Contacts. So to number hit my goals, I know that, so for each contact that you make of additional business you want to add with Red X, let's say, is the amount of people you need to speak with every day. So if I want to do a hundred deals, I need to speak to a hundred new people every single day through Red really? X through prospecting efforts. And so a contact is not, you tried to reach them, but it's actually like, the person answered and said, yes, I want to talk or no, I don't. That's a contact. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. 
So I call those responses just, so I was trying to um, translate. So out of a hundred contacts made, oh, that's your, that's your daily goal if you wanna do a hundred transactions. Yeah, so mine's 35 every day. Oh, okay, got it. And then that's for lead generation. And then I do my lead follow-up as well, which with a triple line dialer takes me two hours, two and a half hours, it's just quick. Wow, that's really interesting. So 35 contacts. Um, and are you using Red X as your CRM or are you using something else as your CRM? So I use Red X as my initial CRM. And then once they turn into a hot lead, I put them into follow up boss is what I use. Gotcha. Yeah, we use that as well. Um, so um, are you finding, I'm sure with expireds and stuff, uh, you know, there's a, a faster relist if you're going to get the business but with the circle prospecting a lot of the people are probably more nurture would you say or no kind of i work with a so all of us have a lot of buyers right now including yourself i'm assuming yeah with, well i mean i don't sell real estate but yeah i know what you mean but with hardly any inventory right so right that's my biggest i've i've double-sided 12 transactions this year by just calling or door knocking right. saying hey barry I know this calls out of the blue. I actually have a buyer. I showed a house in your area. They weren't able to get it. We got outbid for the right price. Would you consider selling? Oh, that's so good. So good. Don't do it unless you have a buyer. But if they say, yeah, we would consider selling. Yeah. When, when can me and my buyer come out to meet you? Yeah. And if it doesn't yeah. work for your buyer, you already know they're looking to sell. So call them and have that conversation. This house didn't work for my buyer. But I still think you have a lot of potential to make you to make what you were asking for plus more. Right. Right. Uh, oh, that's powerful. I wonder um, those in the audience. Um, I'm sure. So think about. Okay, are you going to do this? Are you going to call strangers and try to talk to them about real estate? And if you are, what's that first thing that's like? Ugh, what are you scared of? Right. Um, and, and I want you to type it in there and maybe we'll have Kent just speak to it. Um, and, uh, you know, this is your chance. I mean, so many times we get all these gurus and stuff like that, and that's fine if somebody's a guru. But what's cool about this is you're, you're talking to a colleague that is doing something that you would like to do. And so you have the ability to just ask right now. And I think you should take advantage of that. Um, and, and so very specifically, what's a reason or what are you afraid of? Uh, what's hindering you from doing this? And 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 just think about it practically uh, and uh, you'll get some help. Um, man, I'm just gonna ask you another question. So can I can I intervene? I'm no guru by any means, but I'm well, looking at I'm looking at uh, just my time at Red X and what I saw when people would call in. Honestly, it was like selling a gym membership. You would talk, mm -hmm. I would talk to the person and be like, you are there's no way in hell that you are ever going to use this software. I know it, you know it, right. but you're going to sign up for the gym anyways, just so yeah. you feel better about yourself and know that you're going to do it. So that's, I, I think it's, it's just like the gym. You just have to go and do it. And the reason why people don't go to the gym is because they're uncomfortable, don't know what to say, don't know how to use the machine. In this case, the software, whatever it may be. Yeah. We're getting a lot of questions. Um, so I'm not going to, I'm going to take them in the order that I think would go. So let's talk about first, Mark said uh, he just dreads when he thinks about actually making the call, there's a, a sense of, and that's not a word, but just dread. What would you, we're sitting in a coffee shop, me, you and Mark, and he says that, what are you going to say to him? Um, you just have to increase your mindset. Hit okay. the start button. I so I was I was kind of I go through these little funks where mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I love prospecting. Mark, that's <laughs> it's just normal. Like yeah. I love prospecting. I'm comfortable doing it, but I go through some days where I'm just like, I can't do this. And I yeah. get I get fear of the phone. Yeah. Yeah. So what I did, and this is an option is I hired someone from the Philippines, paid him two bucks an hour 
And his job was to sit there, log into my account. He screen shared with me and all his job was to do was to hit the dial button after every conversation that I had until I got off. Uh. So <laughs> again, there, there's two ways to motivate a donkey. You either feed them or you beat them. So <laughs> I uh, no, I really like that. Um, and uh, I, uh, it's funny. Uh, so I teach um, for another vendor a lot, and um, one of the one of their customers visited my office last week, and he's really struggling. Um, uh, the um, and so I I dusted off the dialer, and I was like, you know what? Let me see if I can do this. And even still, there's that moment of a little bit of angst because you don't know what you're what's coming, and. Uh, you know, 20 minutes of a dialing on the triple line dialer, I get somebody who's been in our database for over a year and um, looking to sell and buy. You would have thought I paid the guy um, because it was just that it was it was a good call. But um, a mindset thing, Mark, that we use is uh, we actually believe we're saving people yeah. from bad agents. So we're motivated by like this really good desire. And what it has surfaced is when you're calling for this good desire. Um, there's a moment where you think about yourself and how you're nervous and you're unhappy doing this. And what you have to recognize is that moment of thinking about yourself is self-centeredness. You're actually, you're not thinking about them. You're thinking about you. And we all know there's some really bad scrupulous agents out there. And so if you can get in that place where you recognize I'm going to serve these people well, you can you be, you can be coming from a great place and still crush it in this business. Um, would you agree, Kent? I one hundred percent agree yeah. with that. Whatever you need to tell yourself to motivate you, right? Like every every person has a different motivation. It could be money. Money will carry you so far. Truthfully, yeah. it could be getting as far as you want to go. It could be serving people. At the end of the day, though, very we're salespeople. Yeah, like it. Our business is talking to strangers. Right. If you can't do that, I don't know that you that you right. can be in this business. Right, right. So um, not so Kelly said uh, she's saying not knowing the answer if they ask me something or looking like I'm not competent. So she's afraid of just that moment where they ask and she's like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Again, normal. I think that comes from role play and just knowing objections. The cool thing is, is everybody has a certain script for mm -hmm. self by owners have their script, expired have their script. And is their script better than our script is the, is the true question. They'll, they'll throw out two, three objection handlers. You just have to get through those and then you're good. Yeah, no, absolutely. And look, when the best attorneys, the best doctors, um, any professional, like when I get, when I'm talking to one of the best of the best and I ask them something they don't know the answer to, they're like, oh man, that's such a good, I really, you, I, I haven't heard that one recently. Yeah. I'll tell you what, you know, the, there's this excitement about what they don't know because they're that good. Yep. And so be excited that they just asked you something they don't know and, uh, and just say, you know, I, I don't know why this works for me, but I just say, um, I don't have that file on me. I don't know why that works, but it does. And they're like, oh, okay. And they say, give me, give me 10 minutes when I get back to my office. I'll give you a call back. Um, so let's see. We're, so we're getting a lot of questions now. Um, to not make the call or ask for the referral deprives someone of the blessings of service. Oh, okay, so that's a comment. That's good. Carmen says she's a newer agent. So outside of buying leads, um, how do agents get phone numbers to call? Right mm. out. Yeah. <laughs> Can tell, tell them about that. So how does it work? So if I, if I buy Red X, what, what am I buying? So they, they have like five different lead services now, I think. I've been out of the game for a little bit, but they have expired FISBOs, pre-foreclosures for rent by owners and geo leads. Uh -huh. So each, each one comes with its own little category. Geo leads is one of my favorite. Mm -hmm. And I think it's one of the most important ones to have right now. Because you can just plug in an address, pull the neighborhood, and call around that neighborhood. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's a geo lead. So what, what Kent was saying is basically the sponsor of this webinar is a service that you buy and it's um, a CRM, a phone dialer and contacts, names, some, a lot of emails but mo and phone numbers. And it calls through that list and you're talking to people that, you know, cause it's all about conversations. The more people you talk to, the more opportunity you have. Yep. All right. Yep. So Amanda says, if you have small children, what tips do you have for consistently pre protecting your prospecting time? I was doing it consistently for six months, then hit a roadblock and it's been hard to get back on schedule. Ooh. I have small children. I, I get that. Yeah, it's, it's just hard to prospect with small children. I have my headset over there, but it's a, I just get a trucker headset. <laughs> <laughs> and then I walk around with my iPad because the trucker headset blocks out all the ambient noise. Right, right. And so I'll just sit there and prospect with that. But if you have small kids, I would love to say you have to prioritize prospecting, but I think prioritizing family is more important. Me too. You there's, know, I, there's other ways to prospect besides on the phone. Yeah. Well, and I would also say that um, I've... So I have three children and we foster for the city of Virginia Beach. So sometimes we have more and um, the I've come to accept the fact that when you are investing in little people, um, you're just going to have to deal with what you have. And so for me, um, I've got this blue Yeti. And the, the, the setting is as high as possible. And then I've got a Zoom setting. So you can go into Zoom, not that you're going to be dialing with Zoom, but it says like, how much noise filtration do you want to have? And the highest one, the example is if a dog is barking next to you, you can't hear. So I think um, uh, another headset I've heard is the Blue Parrot. Have you heard of that one? That's the one I have is Blue Parrot. Okay. So the Blue Parrot I've heard really cancels out a lot of noise. And then the other thing I would say, um, Amanda, is... I think when the kids start yelling, I think it humanizes you. Mm -hmm. I think you can, you can say, ah, kids are home. I'm sure you can hear that. Um, you know, you, you, you go from being a telemarketer to a parent and that resonates with a lot of people. So instead of being afraid of it, I think you should embrace it and kind of wear it as a badge of honor instead of something you need to apologize for. I used to apologize when I'd be going to my kid's baseball game. I can't show you that home. I'm so sorry. I got to go to my kid's baseball game. And as my career evolved, I realized that like, well, actually it's because my wife helped me to see like, why are you giving them that info that you don't owe them that information? Just tell them you're not free. And, uh, and so it, you know, it, it, it helped me to realize that I can have boundaries and it's okay. I'm still working on it, but I have an appointment. I, that's what yeah. I, that's my go-to. I have an appointment. Right. It can be time with your kids. Yeah. All right, Anthony asks, what time frame can a newbie expect to see results? Time per day times how many days? So amount of time spent per day times how many days equals, kind of depends if you're good or not, right? Like, yeah. I mean, if you're not. Yeah, it really does. I, so I think it's just the, it's kind of a universal law, what you're doing, universal sales law. What you do for the next 30 days is going to impact you for the next 90. Mm -hmm. so if you don't do anything, you're gonna be impacted for getting nothing for the next 90 days. So yeah. I would say for a new agent, I play the 100 contact game, 100 contact rule game. And that right. went through Steve Powers, who is another Virginia Beach agent. I don't know if you know Steve. But anyways. I like that with names. Steve Powers taught me this. You'll never get to 100 contacts and not get an appointment. So um, I, yeah, I, that's the game I play. How many yep. contacts am I at? Am I at a hundred? No, not yet. So that's my answer. I guess it's, it's different for everybody. Did you say Bowers or powers? Powers. With a P? With a P. Okay. Yeah. I know who you're talking about. I was looking for Bowers at first. I was like, I don't really know. But... <laughs> All right. So, um, and I would also say, like, I think the better you get, the more you're able to capitalize on the conversations you have. And for my new agents, I tell them, look, 
there is no way I can teach you every objection and everything you need to know, because even the best script, it's never going to work out the way that you want. There's always going to be this weird angle. And so my agents, we use questions, um, like a, more of a question-based sales approach. Um, and we allow the, the questions to kind of direct where we're going to go. But for us, um, when my agents say, well, how do I handle this? I say, look, just collect all the failures, write down the reason the person said, I don't need your help, and then start collecting responses to them. And so in that sense, it's on the job training. Um, and, you know, I think we just have to stop being so concerned with what we perceive to be rejection. Um, and, uh, and, and so um, for me, it got to the point where if, <laughs> if they were talking to me and there was any real estate related need coming down the pipe in the next six to 12 months, I was going to be their agent eight out of 10 times. Okay. And, but then I've got other agents that they've got to have a hundred good conversations to get one or two, cause they're just not good at, at transitioning. And it's just like any skill as Ken, the first time you started dialing, were you amazing at it or did it take a little bit of time? Um, I was the first time I started dialing for Reddit or for, prospecting wise, I was pretty good at it because I spent eight hours a day doing it forever and ever. Right. <laughs> so, no, that's great. Yeah. But, but at Red X, I, no, I wasn't great at it initially. It you just had to learn a lot that. of work. Yeah. And, and it just came down to, they don't require you to use scripts at Red X, but I was very scripted. Uh -huh. I said every single time they would respond one way and I would reply another way. And I knew certain questions, kind of like what you said. When you're when you use a question-based script, which is the best script, you know what what uh, responses it's going to trigger. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to answer accordingly because you will know if I ask you this question, you're going to respond this way. There's one of two ways you're going to respond. He who asks the questions controls the conversation. Yep. So uh, Mark is asking for suggestions for great scripts. So if somebody wants to buy scripts or have access to scripts, have you found there's a vendor? Does Red X have scripts? Um, where, where can someone go to find more information on this? Yeah, I again, Red X does have scripts, definitely, inside their platform. I'm, I'm a Mike Ferry trained agent. That's what I use. I think that any script that you use, just stick to it. Because yeah. eventually you're going to create your own version of that script. The thing I like about Mike Ferry is it's all question based. Yeah, I wasn't going to say it, but I knew as soon as you said money to the political party or the, uh, I was like, oh, he's with Mike Ferry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, really that's something they do. It's good though. It's very, it works. Um, so I, I don't know how long this is. I think this is a 45 minute webinar. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yes. So we've, we've got about five, eight, no, eight more minutes. Um, and, uh, you know, those that are, um, maybe we tried to answer your question and we didn't, you still have questions about it. You can rephrase the question or come back. Um, and, uh, you know, for, for my agents, um, we, so we use a lot of uh, remarketing. And so, you know, we're calling people that, about 1500 times a month, somebody did something important on our website. And so I just told my agents, just call and just tell them, I want to remove you from my database. But before I did, I just wanted to find out, did you ever find a home? And um, 33%, no, 33 out of 200. So that's what 16% of the conversations turn into appointments because we're just, it's a, an administratively focused uh, call and you know with with expireds something that m we've done and we've automated some of the messaging we say um hey i saw you were trying to sell your house or we saw where uh you were um uh um you tried and it didn't work out um i think i know why and i'd like to spend 15 minutes on the phone with you helping you sell it yourself and it's such a different approach we literally i know you're probably like but for us, it's, I, it works though. That again, right. you're doing it. That's the, right. that's, and I'm not going to go out and tell and say, Mike Ferry is the best. 
I don't well, drink that Kool Aid. I I do have this bobblehead though. I call <laughs> no, he's him. good. Mike Ferry's great. Yeah, and and it's. I always it's, say my Lord and Savior, Mike Ferry. Which oh, I probably shouldn't <laughs> say that. <laughs> um, but I uh, I think that um, I think it's just about finding uh, the right script for you. So when yeah, on the disc yeah. profile test, I'm 100% I and 100%. S. So I'm actually just supposed to be walking around hugging everybody. Uh, like I'm not supposed to be in business. I'm just supposed to like just you're, to, you're an amiable, huh? Yeah, yeah. Very, very, very. And so I had to figure out a way to be successful and stay true to who I am. And so you've got you guys got to figure out who you are and what works for you, and then just go out and just do it. That's the message I'm getting from Kent. Would that be a good over summary? Yeah. Yeah. Consistency. And if you can't be if you can't make yourself be consistent, then find someone to help you be consistent. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I, I think time blocking too is really important. Um, you know, a lot of my thing should be when you set your schedule, you write prospecting first and everything kind of goes around. It. Right, right. Yeah. And we, I tell them, you know, you block it. And then if you have to show a home during, during the time, just attempt to keep the appointment. I yeah. do have something that I've got to, you know, I might be able to maneuver or change, but I figured I would ask before I, uh, before I say yes to this time, are you available at the other time? And, um, and then you're kind of trying to protect that follow-up time. And if you'll do that, you'll find you're actually going to stay consistent. Yeah. Um, but with you being all in on this model, I assume it's easier to have a sense of structure because you're setting those appointments for yourself and there's a rhythm to your business. And I know sometimes in real estate, things go crazy, but um, you know, because you're, are you, are you buying online leads too or no? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Oh, okay. Mostly right. like home light. I, I mean, I don't spend a lot of my, it's more referral. Got it. Yep. Got it. Yeah, that's good. Best that. time. What's your favorite time to call? So my favorite time to call is between five and seven at night okay. but the best time to call is in the morning like make Why is it, that? because again like you said we're in real estate afternoons are so unpredictable for real estate yeah. agents yeah. and mornings are typically very predictable yeah yeah uh, eat the frog do the thing that you hate the most first and then the rest of the day is cake well even yeah. even beyond that just do the thing that you're it's like exercise i haven't gone and worked out yet today I missed mm -hmm. out on the gym. Am I going to do it? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it's usually the first thing I do in the morning if you can't. Take one. Yeah. No, absolutely. All right, guys. Well, um, any other questions before we we wrap this up? Man, this has been really, I think, really rubber meets the road, very practical, and I think a lot of people got a lot out of this. Um, and so I can see why Red X asked you to share today because, um, you know, this is this is what people need to hear. Uh, they need to hear, get out there and, and go do it. Um, there is a special for Red X you, that, oh, they're going to waive the setup fee, um, and which is uh, $150 to set up your account. They're going to do that for free. Um, oh, we got one more. Okay. One more question and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. Uh, Matt asked you about role-playing groups. So role-play groups at, Again, it depends on what scripts you're following. I wouldn't jump into a role play group that they use a different script because mm. then it's just kind of unproductive. So if you're using Tristan's scripts, for example, or lab code agent scripts, mm -hmm. I think that's a really good place to find your role play partner. How many people are in lab code agents? 130,000. Yeah. I bet you can find someone in there that has the same mindset and scripts as you join together and, and make those calls. Yeah. So maybe just post oh, 139. Sorry, Jake. Um, so uh, maybe just post in LCA and say, hey, I'm going to work on calling expireds. Is anybody looking at doing that or, or what have you? Um, I'd love to partner with somebody. Um, and you you can even do the the calls through Facebook Messenger. You know, you don't have to um, I mean, you know, you don't, you don't have to invent the wheel here. It's just about having a conversation with somebody else. Um, and uh, Amanda thanks us for the information. So 
Man, Kent, I appreciate you sharing with the LCA community. I know that the, those that um, were able to attend and those that are going to listen to later on really appreciate it. I appreciate it. I learned a lot, man. So keep it up. Thanks, Barry. Thanks yeah. for having me. I yeah, like man. That. Absolutely. All right. You have a great rest of your night. You too. Thanks, Barry. All right. Barry. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. Yeah.